Ever expect to see a front wheel drive truck up here? <laughs> Glad you made it. Yeah, we are too. Come on, Maverick. You can do it. Hey guys, welcome to the Happy Yak Ranch. And usually when we come to the ranch, we typically bring a full-size truck like this Ram because we're towing and hauling stuff. But today we decided to bring something quite a bit smaller. David, what do you think of the new Maverick? You know, I really like the Maverick. I especially like the name of the Maverick. I like all of Ford's names. Bronco, Mustang, Maverick, Pinto. Oh, well, Pinto, Pinto not so much. <laughs> But in this video, we're gonna find out, is the Maverick enough truck to be useful on a ranch? First of all, the four by eight sheet of plywood test. Okay. Which got, everybody must do. I've got lots of those yes. we can test it with. But also, you have a job for us, don't you? Well, being Thanksgiving, it's always good to go up in the hills and cut a little firewood. And the one thing about the Maverick that they've touted is its payload. Yeah. I say we put it to work and see if we can't max out its payload up in the woods with firewood. With big logs? Yeah, we're gonna load some logs in here and bring them home. For the first test, we're gonna find out can a four by eight sheet of plywood fit in the bed of the Maverick, but first, let's see how it fits in the bed of a standard crew cab truck. In this case, the Ram 1500 with a five and a half foot bed. David, bring it on in. Wow, David, you are a beast. Okay. So this is very oh, typical. Look. Right, yep. so it fits perfectly between the wheel wells. With room to spare. With room to spare, and it almost, you know, just hangs over what? Three inches, four, four inches. inches. Yeah. Now in the Maverick, we do have a couple of tricks up our sleeve. First of all, we can reposition the tailgate cables to a higher point. And now Andre and David will demonstrate why. So this kind of positions the tailgate at an angle. And why is that Andre? Well, so we can load it, uh, the Hopefully, uh, flat. Just barely between the side rails. Yeah. It's got about an inch to spare. Obviously a narrower, smaller truck. And it goes over the wheel wells, but this is perfect. Uh, it just, yeah. it's flat, right? Yeah, it's flat. I mean, we're only sticking out 19 inches. 19 inches, so you would put like a red flag here. No. Right, so it's all, it's all legal. And we could tie it down using these points, actually. I'm thinking in order to get max payload out of this Ford, Tommy, we're gonna to have to load it pretty high. And so I think we can make some stake sides that will hold the logs in so we can strap them down and keep them from falling out on our way down the mountain. So in a traditional like full-size truck or an HD truck, you would have stake posts, right? You would. Where you could actually insert the wood into the bed. That's true, and make your own side panels. But we don't have that on the Maverick. What we do have instead are kind of these channels, which you can use for like two by sixes, but David's gonna get even more clever than that. Yeah, I think we'll just take some two by sixes and put one across the bottom to hold up the ones that are going straight up and do something a little more creative in the front. Since it's interesting that the wheel wells, like a regular pickup, they go all the way back here, but then here they don't. So we'll have to be creative in how we get some stakes coming up here. Why, why are you carrying everything, man? The idea here is we pile the logs up, yeah. then it gives us support and uh, they won't fall off the side. And then we can strap the top, we can hook onto this right here, strap over our logs and bring home 1,500 pounds of firewood. Woo! All right, so I've cut myself some oak, which is a strong wood, stronger than pine, and I figured so I trim these down just enough that they'll slide through there. They're touching here, here, and here. And it'll keep those logs from falling out until we can get a strap over the top. All right, David, so welcome to the new Ford Maverick. This is the $20,000 entry level truck. This one has equipped about 26 grand. What do you think? You know what? Number one, the first impression is quiet. Super quiet. Of course, <laughs> I, I've never really been in a hybrid before, so this is pretty nice driving a 
and a hybrid for the first time. When we're stopped here, you hear a light hum and that's it. Yeah, nothing. So what's going on is we have a 2.5 liter four cylinder that powers the front wheels and that's mated to an electric motor as well. Right. So at slow speeds, it's I mean, hybrid it's, mode. Yeah, it's all yeah. electric. Yeah, all nothing's electric. going on. Now, of course, if you want the hybrid, you have to get the front wheel drive, which I'm a little bit worried about going up the mountain, but you seem pretty confident. Well, it, it, you know, we've taken the F-150 up two-wheel drive up there once before. Rear wheel drive, though. Uh, it was rear wheel drive. It struggled, but I think the difference between rear wheel drive and front wheel drive will make all the difference. So you live and work this ranch. You have always been the proponent, proponent of an eight-foot bed. Now, well, now, for some reason, you seem pretty excited about the four-and-a-half-foot bed. Why well, is that? You know, everybody goes into town for their groceries and Julie loves having a little small, easy to park vehicle. And I think this might be just the ticket for her. She can put, uh, she can go buy furniture that she refurbishes and put it in the back and go to the grocery store and carry all the grandkids in the back. I think this is a win-win for, for a lot of people. Well guys, I think we're pushing the Maverick hybrid front wheel drive to its limit today. So if you get the turbo, right, the little four cylinder turbo, uh -huh. you can get it in all wheel drive. Oh, can you? Yeah. Yes, it does have 191 horsepower. Yes, it has a 2.5 liter gas engine, has an electric motor, has a planetary ECVT. I think our limitation right here, Tommy, may be the tires. They're an all season tire, not a lot of tread on them, and our gravel's dry right now. And so just getting traction on this gravelly area might be a little difficult. I don't think it was meant to climb mountains and get logs. Now we don't have a huge amount of ground clearance, hopefully enough for this kind of rutted out trail. Um, but we shall take it slow. Yep, this will be a challenge for us. Kind of see how it manages the terrain. It's slipping a little bit, but this is the steepest part right here. And I feel one tire grabbing and then the other one will grab. Come on, Maverick. You can do it. Come on, Maverick. Come on. Come on, buddy. Wow, that traction control really is it off. It does. You can really feel it grabbing one side and then the other. Wow. Whoa, look at that. It's right up through all that. Great work. <laughs> So what I did is I kept it right around five miles an hour, kept my foot in it, traction control off in slippery mode. And like you said, you could feel it kind of send yeah. power both directions. Yeah. And we were able to get up even with front wheel drive. <laughs> no way. No way, I cannot believe that thing climbed the steep grade, probably about 25 degrees in front wheel drive only. Now we do have one more steep spot up here. It's not quite as gravelly, so we'll see how she does. All right, that sounds good, David. So Andre, do you, you know how it got its name, Maverick? Was it because of a Top Gun movie? No, as good as Top Gun was, it wasn't because of the movie. It was because of the Maverick was not necessarily what we term it today as someone who kind of thinks out of the box and maybe goes uh, a little farther than the rest, but it was about the calves that didn't get branded because they could avoid, they were quick enough, fast enough, they could avoid getting roped and so they'd end up out in the in the range without a brand on them and they'd have to go round up the Mavericks after uh, all the rest had been branded. And that's why on the original Maverick nameplate that they had on the cars back in the 70s, it had a little longhorn uh, right above the V and that was because of the Maverick uh, roots. So David, as we climb up toward where the firewood is it's getting kind of narrow here right it is narrow because we don't get we don't go up here very often the yaks do climb all the way up here but uh, we're going to be going through a gate into an area that's been burned uh what was it 2013 when the big fire came through almost came down to the house but it stopped just right up here so all these all this timber has been fallen over because it starts to rot over time after it burns the bottom does and then they they fall over over our road so we've been struggling to keep the road clean so that's what we're going to do today ever expect to see a front wheel drive truck up here <laughs> no. glad you made it yeah we are too all right so you can get a good perspective of what it looks like up here very narrow trail we've got a series of logs and david has cut them up already looking good david so we've got a few of them here and then we're going to keep going and there's a whole bunch more up there. I'm going to get some chainsaw action and going to see how the Ford Maverick performs under load. Another cool thing about the Ford is that it's currently running right now. 
but because it's a hybrid it is dead silent and also because it's a hybrid we can charge up our batteries while the truck is running and still enjoy the peace in nature um, until David fires up his chainsaws of yeah. course. David, when they introduced the Maverick, Ford told us that some of these tie-down points, yeah. they tested to the same standard as the Super Duty truck. Wow. So, so it's supposed to hold a lot of tension. So it'll hold logs piled up eight feet tall then. Well, I hope so. Hang on, redo it. Andre messed up like that. <laughs> well, that didn't work. What the heck are you guys doing? <laughs> But your wife's gonna say, Andre, yeah. what'd you do today? Your clothes are all messed up and black. I'm gonna tell her that Roman had me at the coal mine. <laughs> all right, onwards. So far the Maverick is handling the load beautifully. Let's keep going. Mm. <laughs> you have an uh, yeah, let me make sure I've got traction off and slippery mode engaged. Push Come on, I got it, I got it. Now the issue with the Maverick is the more you load up the bed, the less kind of off-road worthy it is, unlike a two-wheel drive truck with rear-wheel drive, because all the power is on the, uh, all the traction from the front wheels, and of course we're loading up weight in the back. That right there is probably 250. What? <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least 250. <laughs> Holy moly, Tommy. This is just will close. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, Ford. What am I hitting? Nice! So a long time ago, like many decades ago, in the 1960s, Ford had a model of pickup called the Unibody. And the Unibody wasn't actually a Unibody, it was a body on frame truck, but it was one continuous panel that connected the bed to the cab. And one of the issues with the Unibody back in the 60s is if you loaded it up like this, you couldn't actually open the door because there'd be so much flex in the body. Now the question is, can you open the rear door in the Maverick even near max payload? And is there a lot of flex? No. Opens Tommy. and closes like a dream. Tommy, it's heavy. I, you... I'm doing a stand-up, Andre. No, please. Here. We'll, sh we'll, oh. share, we'll share the... Oh. We'll share the work here. Okay, so now I gotta back this thing up. <laughs> Good thing I have a backup camera. Genuinely is one of the worst backup cameras in the industry. Look at that, look how distorted it is. Oh, it just looks terrible. But they gotta, they gotta save money somewhere, I suppose. Guys, did you know that the Maverick hybrid does not have a reverse gear? In reverse, it's only using the electric motor to power it. When I was at the event for the Maverick first drive, I asked the engineers, well, it, can the uh, electric motor pull maximum load when it's reversing? They said yes. Even with a small trailer, 2,000 pounds, this thing can tow. And it's now doing it, but now let's see it climb. So David, did you think we'd get all this wood in the back of this little guy? Well, I knew we'd get it in the back. The question is, can we get down the mountain with it in the back? But I mean, it, it did squat. So that's close to 31 inches. We started at 34 and a half. 
Yeah, I think we're using all of our suspension in the back. Well, we're not on the bump stop, so we still have some suspension travel. Yeah. It did reduce our ground clearance a little bit. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of hop that we can jump over a rock and worry about hit, taking something out. So we'll have to be a little careful going down, but luckily our trail doesn't have any big rocks in it. <laughs> What was that? Should we see what we hit? Yeah, we better get out and look on that one. So with our limited ground clearance, this was enough to actually stop our forward momentum. That rock was just a little bit much, but it did, all it hit was a skid plate. So no damage. That's good. We're good, but we did need to clear the trail off a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is the issue when, when you've got the ground clearance is very limited and so they do make a model called the FX4, right? Which has got a little bit more clearance and off-road radius. Yep. So that would be the one you really want to take out here. But then you can't get that in the hybrid. So do you want the fuel economy uh, or do you want the ground clearance? Well, that one would have no problem doing what we did to No, I think traction and power yeah. lives, that would probably be a little better off at this kind of thing. But we're just going to now have to be really conscious about uh, ground clearance, especially in the rear. I don't think the front has really changed that right. much. Um, right. Well, that rock hit pretty much midsection, but I think it's just, it's taken the whole thing down enough that there, it wasn't an issue going up, but it was an issue coming down. It was an issue coming down. I think you're exactly right. Drone is in the air. We've got the steep downhill. It's gonna look like nothing on camera, but in person, yep. it's pretty. And that way, just a little bit, we can avoid the big rut right there. Pretty sizable. Oh, though, you can feel the tires really, yeah, really this, struggling to keep the load maintained. This is a steep part right here. Oh yeah, good work though. Yep, Pretty. Log, the logs aren't coming through the back window yet. That's what I like to see. <laughs> Got a little bit of slippage, but not bad. Honestly, David, I think if you put better tires on this. Oh, big difference. For the kind of thing that you do. Yeah. It would have a really big impact on its overall capability. Well, I wouldn't recommend anybody doing what we did today. No, this is a do not try at home situation. But I think this is a good indication of what this little truckle as Andre would put it, is capable, capable of. of. Yeah. yeah. All right, let me get the drone out of the sky. So we've come to the scales. We're gonna drive on up here and see how much the Maverick weighs fully loaded. So you think we'll be over 5,000 pounds? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 5,410 pounds. <laughs> well, 5,400. So the truck alone, right around 3,700 with all the stuff, we're at, you know, 5,000 and some change with the two of us, you know, over 5,000 pounds. So we hit, we fully maxed out the little Ford Maverick today to the most of its capability. All right, Andre, so we are at max capacity right now. Um, and it feels pretty good. A couple of impressions though, the steering has gotten quite light. <laughs> like old school American uh, land barge light. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure I'd want to drive this truck at night because I think we might blind everybody. <laughs> well right now you are slightly over gross vehicle weight. So it's a good thing we're on the farm road and not, you know, actually in public. Well, if I kick David out, we would be at exactly the payload capacity. But David's extra 140 pounds here is what is killing our payload capacity. Are you at least a little bit impressed? Well, I think we pushed it to its max today. I, we would never recommend somebody go back in the woods with a front wheel drive little trucklet yes. and do this. But I think we have proved that this Maverick, which I love the name, by the way, yeah. is fully capable of doing what we did. And, uh, you only can see this at TFL truck. Nobody else is gonna do this. Nobody else has used the flex bed in this flex right. capacity. We have flexed it to its max. Thank you for watching guys. As always, tfltruck.com and tfl-studios.com for all the automotive fun.